seen fit, Lord Jesus, to call us, Lord, to your service, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for the blessings upon our life, Father, for this place, Lord, that you have created, Lord Jesus, for us to come and worship. Thank you for your spirit, Lord. We ask for your blessings on the service tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the title I want to use tonight is, Trust is an Acquired Trait, or Is It? Trust is an acquired trait, or is it? It's kind of a question, really. <clears throat> but I want to back up a little bit. Uh, I kind of like to link things together, and I want to go back to a little bit about what we talked about the last time we was together, and <clears throat> because it, it connects. It's, it's, it's linked together. So if we go back <clears throat> last, well, it's been a couple of weeks now. But uh, when I was here last, we talked about that there is a cross, with the wall. There's a cross for each of us to carry. And that came from Matthew 10, 38. Jesus said, And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. That's a pretty frank statement. Amen? Amen. Means you've got a cross to carry. We all do. Then we also talked about this book being different from any other book in that it is self-verifying or self-authenticating. It certifies itself because we related how that the book, this book, these words of Jesus, talks about the Holy Ghost experience, which is a life-transforming experience. So when you believe the Word, you get the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost confirms the Word. So this book self-authenticates itself. And there's no other book, to my knowledge, that has any kind of arrangement like that. Now, there are other books out there that people may read, and they give them an experience of some sort. They get a feeling out of it. But not a life-altering experience like we <clears throat> We also talked about how that we have to love the Lord with all of our heart, our whole heart. We must be committed completely. <clears throat> and from Matthew 22 and 37, let's look at that real quick here. Matthew 22 and 37. How do we know we have to love Him with our whole heart? Matthew 22 and 37. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Now this is Old Testament too, but it's also repeated here in the New Testament. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Amen? So we have to give God all of our heart. He will not settle for anything less. That is not to say that we have to be, we're not going to be perfect. In this life, in this corruptible body that we still are dwelling in, Paul said this corruptible must put on incorruption. Amen? And this immortal will put on immortality. But we live in a corrupt body. But we must be 100% committed to God, to Jesus. He has to have it all. <clears throat> all right. So let's go back now to Proverbs. <clears throat> kind of links it together. Because in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. There's that whole heart thing again. Sure. That whole heart. And lean not into thine own understanding. <clears throat> so what I want to talk to you about tonight is trust. Is it an acquired trait? Is it learned, developed, or does it come naturally? Is, is it just instilled in you somehow? And it, as it turns out, it's both, as we will find tonight. Let me do this. But first I'm going to go to Genesis 15 and 6. And we're going to talk about Abraham a little bit. I think everybody knows the story of Abraham and how he started out. Uh, back up and give you just a little bit of background. 
<clears throat> Genesis 12. <coughs> now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. Number one. Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred. Number two. From thy kindred. And from thy father's house. Number three. Unto a land that I will show thee. Now, I think we've all been in Sunday school and we kind of remember the story of Abraham and how he started out. Uh, he ended up kind of getting sidetracked. He ended up down in Egypt. And uh, he took Lot with him, so he missed. It said, away from thy kindred. But Lot went with him. So it was a while before Abraham kind of got his act together okay, and was really doing what God had told him to do in the first place before Jesus could really, before God could put the blessings on him that he wanted to have. First he had to get away from that country. Now, <clears throat> there's some debate as to uh, what I'm going to tell you as far as the natural man is concerned. But the story about Abraham kind of tells me that, that it's true. Um, but he comes from <clears throat> Ur, the, the land of Chaldeans. And there's some debate, as I said, about the kind of worship that they had. They worship false gods. But as to whether or not there was a requirement, some people believe that there was actually a requirement for human sacrifice in that land under some of those religions, some of those faiths. Others say, 